Come on. Oh man, the intro joke didn't write itself. Hi folks, welcome to Glitter Void Gamecraft. My name is Eric and this week we're continuing the Town Square mini-series within the larger series with this, a decorative fountain. This is a great feature for any city or honestly any dungeon too. Whether it's that location for an awkward date with a DNPC or a dungeon feature where a foolish halfling is knocking a dwarf skeleton down into it and awakening the hordes of the deep. It's also the first time on this channel that I'm going to be using a five minute epoxy for the water effect, so stick around to see how that goes. But for now, let's get building. Even at the very earliest points, I wasn't quite sure whether this was going to be a decorative fountain or more like a well. Some sort of circular cistern and some sort of tiered dais, dais? however that word is pronounced. The floor of the cistern would be decorated in some way and I use some sort of water effect. Since I don't have an ability to cut very thin layers, I was limited by the thickness of the foam core that I was using. So I would have to make sure that the steps weren't too close together because that would make a surface that no one could stand on. My first thought was to reuse the walls that I had cut for the stable as different levels of the cistern itself. But then I thought about trying to make something circular. The two inch wide solid piece didn't work. There was just so much of a curve that it broke. So I decided to break out some math and try to figure out how wide this thing needed to be. To make a diameter of four inches using the pre-cut pieces, this would leave me with a circumference of about 12 and a half inches. And you thought you weren't gonna use math in the real world. I cut a length out of the dollar store foam core board to bend into shape. I removed the paper and gradually tried introducing a curve, just little bit by little bit, trying very hard not to break anything. I drew in grout lines using a mechanical pencil lead. For something with this much tension in it, I wanted to do everything I could to avoid using the blade. I made sure to continue the grout lines across the top edge that would be visible after gluing it down, and then introduced a stone texture just by rolling a ball of foil across it. It still felt a little bit too tall, so I sliced off just enough to make it feel like a more appropriate height. Despite minutes of calculations, there was still a little bit of overlap, which I trimmed off. This all went a little bit wonky, probably because I ended up tracing the inside of a not perfect circle and then tried to make everything line up. So I decided to make the design a circle and then bend the walls as needed to match it. I used a compass to trace the circles and then drew out a compass rose inspired decoration that would be in the bottom of the fountain. Since part of this platform would be visible outside of the fountain itself, I went ahead and created grout lines throughout and managed to cover some of my mistakes here and there by making them appear to be cracks. Since the cistern itself was much wider than I originally planned, I decided to limit the dais to two separate tiers, the bottom one being something of an octagon. I traced out a much wider pattern, sliced in with a knife and added stone textures, not forgetting, of course, any of the exposed edges and then expanded those lines with a pencil, making sure the widened lines extended a little bit underneath where the central platform would sit. I didn't trust anything other than hot glue to both set up quick enough for me to get on with my day and to have the strength to resist this tension. So that's what I used to both join the walls together, attach the walls to the base, and attach the base to the bottom segment. The joining point between the two ends of the walls was still a little wonky, so I thought this would be a great place to be hidden by some sort of a housing for a spigot. I eyeballed the height for the two outer segments to create sort of a sandwich that would hold an inner piece, and then just used the two outside pieces as a jig to mark off the height of the inner piece. 
I imagine this is where the pipes or whatever mechanism actually fed the fountain were kept within. The outer piece wouldn't sit flat because of the curve of the cistern, so I took an X-Acto and carved in sort of a channel so that the curve could be recessed within that and everything would sit flat. For the spigot, I used the cap of a tube of super glue. This was, of course, much too oddly shaped as it was, so I took some hobby clippers and trimmed everything down. I clipped away the threads for the cap as best I could and then filed those down and chipped away a little, whatever you call the top of a spigot. I cut in grout lines and expanded them with a pencil, making sure that I left a slightly larger block for where the spigot itself would attach. The spigot would be left separate during painting and attached later. Everything got the usual coat of Mod Podge mixed with black craft paint. With so many thin edges, I wanted to reinforce this and make sure that everything got a solid coating. Once the base coat was finished, I went into the cistern and put a big gloop of Mod Podge right around where the cistern walls joined up. This was gonna hold a water effect, so I wanted to make sure it was sealed. I have bad luck with plastic taking the Mod Podge mixture, so I did this separately using Vallejo Brush On Primer. For the paint job, I went with the same color scheme that I did for the city square, a darker gray for the base coat, and then picked out individual stones with a myriad of other colors. Since you could see the inner and outer walls of the cistern and I didn't work too hard making sure my brick pattern matched up, I tried to avoid any bricks that the brick pattern was too wonky on. The top piece of the spigot assembly was done in a special color, the vanilla, and the spigot got a coat of gunmetal. I did an all over dry brush with a gray before doing the compass rose design. My thinking was that this was more like a tile than stonework, so I didn't want it to look exactly the same as everything else. Once I got started on the tile work, I marked each piece that I intended to do with the one color first. There's so much overlapping lines and it could get confusing and I didn't want to have to try to go back and fix too much of my work. While giving the whole thing the usual coat of the homemade black wash, I decided I didn't like the center of the compass rose being plain and went back in and hit it with a terracotta. This would later get its own coat of wash. Once the wash had dried, I gave everything a dry brush with suede. Despite this whole project being basically finished, I decided now would be a perfect time to do some experimenting. I wanted to create the appearance of light distortions in the bottom of the fountain. You know that sort of look on the bottom of a swimming pool where the light is broken up into kind of patches. I was worried that just the plain old epoxy by itself wasn't going to sell this as real water, that it would look like a toy. I let this effect fade out as I got towards the edges where there would be less light. It's about time we saw some glitter on this channel. To create the appearance of coins sitting in the bottom of the fountain, I just took a small pile of glitter and some tacky glue and kind of brushed the glue on and then tapped a few pieces here and there. And then I got some globs of the glue and glitter and mushed it about. Honestly though, since the epoxy that I was working with is a glue itself, this was sort of unnecessary, so I just kind of ended up sprinkling some in the bottom. I decided to give everything on the inside a very, very slight dry brush of a light blue to hopefully add some tint to the water. And now for the step that is going to ruin and or bring this whole project together. This five minute epoxy is great for small water effects and unlike other types of resin, doesn't take forever to cure. Problem was is I had less than half a tube of it and once I got it in, I quickly realized that this was not nearly gonna be enough. But I went ahead with what I had and teased it into the corners, especially by the spigot. And it looked pretty good when it had dried. 
I honestly would have left it like this, but because of the dry brushing being above the surface of the water, I was gonna have to add some more to fix it. As the dry brush wasn't nearly dark enough, I decided to tint the surface of the epoxy with some blue wash. The idea of adding a wash to the surface of a resin like this is to create this effect where the water is darker the deeper it is. So if you're looking at it through a shallow angle right up against the edge, the water would appear clearer, but if you looked straight down through, it would look more blue. The problem is, is that this wash dries with a matte finish that ruins the glossy water effect. This can be solved by hitting it with a gloss varnish on top of it. I have no idea why this works, but as you can see here, once that gets on, it makes it shine through. I felt the spigot was sticking out too far, and since I didn't have some sort of saw I could use, I went ahead and cut a small hole. This would allow me to recess the nozzle a bit so it didn't feel so weird and bulky. A quick trip to the hardware store for some more of the epoxy, and I got to working on a second pour. I would have put even more on, but by my count, there's about seven and a half bucks of epoxy in this at this point, and that's enough. I hit everything with a dry brush of suede as a final highlight. Then I took it all outside to hit it with a matte finish, is what I would be saying if I didn't have a glossy water effect on all of this. What I should have done is finished and sealed this project before doing any of the epoxy pour, but oh well, live and learn. A piece with this much water around it is gonna have all kinds of nastiness in between the rocks, so I went to town with some brown and green washes to add mildew and water stains and all sorts of grossness. Just make sure you don't get any on the surface of the water, or if you do, touch it up with some gloss varnish. Also, just like on the town square piece, I added some moss by stuffing glue down in some of the cracks or making kind of a sloppy mixture here and forcing it between some of the stones. Once the glue had dried a little bit, I went back with a brown wash to darken all of that up. And voila, a fountain complete with water effects and various stains of undetermined origin. One very intentional choice in the building of this was that the widest point of the base was just large enough to cover the symbol on the town square. That way this could either be a different town or just a different location in the town. The branding of the town doesn't have to be consistent all the way through. Assuming you haven't glued yourself to the desk with the epoxy, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, let me know in the comments below and any ideas that you have for selling the water effects with very shallow epoxy. If you found anything particularly useful, consider giving the video a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel. That really helps me out. I have two, maybe three ideas for more features to add to the Town Square mini-series. And after that, we'll get into the real meat of the city. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I'm not getting my quarterback.